The story of King Arthur and the Sword of Excalibur is one of the most famous British legends, and for centuries, this story has been passed down from one generation to another through many different literary works of authors and poets. In fact, there are many stories which differ from one another, but we'll talk about the most famous one, and by the end, we think you will be surprised. The story of the sword and the stone, which some believe to be the same legendary Excalibur, essentially tells the tale of a sword that was stuck inside of a large stone that could only be pulled out by the one true king of England. Someone pulling the sword from the stone was unlikely to many common men, and as many stories go, everyone tried to pull this sword from the stone in order to become the one true king of England. It is said that many tried to dislodge this sword from the granite block, young and old, weak and small and even the strongest men in the kingdom were unable to remove the sword. This would only be accomplished by King Arthur, and he did come along and do what was seemingly impossible. And when he did pull the sword from the stone, it proved his divine appointment as king and the true heir of Uther Pendragon, the legendary king of sub-Roman Britain and the father of King Arthur. But as you might know, there are many different stories when it comes to King Arthur's sword, and not everyone can agree if the legend is true, or which story might be closer to reality, or even if the sword and the king existed at all. In fact, there are some who claim that the sword pulled from the stone was not Excalibur at all. One of those authors, by the name of Sir Thomas Mallory, wrote that King Arthur broke his first sword in the fight against King Pellinore. It was shortly after this that Arthur received a new sword from the Lady of the Lake, which was called Excalibur. Mallory distinguished the two swords from each other, the one that Arthur pulled from the stone and the one he received from the Lady of the Lake, an enchantress also known as Vivienne or Nimue. According to legend, the lady lived in a castle beneath the lake surrounding the mystical island of Avalon. She raised Lancelot and gave Arthur the magical sword which he treasured. In some stories, when Arthur was near death, he threw the sword back into the water, not wanting his enemies to claim it, and the Lady of the Lake caught it and took it back down to her castle. But stories also say that she took Arthur to Avalon and he was saved. There is a similar, although less known story which comes from the Italian region of Tuscany, and this is where some experts claim came the real legend of the sword in the stone. The story talks of a Saint Galgano who was born in 1148 in a place called Cusdino, Italy. He was a minor noble having spent his youth as a wealthy knight and was only concerned with worldly pleasures. He was trained in the art of war and he was both arrogant and violent. However, as he grew older, he later renounced any ideologies of warfare and chose the path of a hermit. This all began when Saint Galgano had a vision of the Archangel Michael, who is incidentally often depicted as a warrior saint. One version of the legend states that the Archangel Michael appeared before the saint and showed him the path to salvation, and the angel even provided him directions to a place where he would achieve this. The next day he declared his intention of becoming a hermit and found a nearby cave where he would make his new home. Of course, his family and his friends ridiculed him for this decision, but the story becomes more bizarre from here on out. His mother persuaded Galgano to go see his fiance one last time before completely renouncing all his worldly pleasures. And wearing his expensive nobleman's clothes, he climbed on his horse to go see her. But on his way there, his horse suddenly became spooked and it suddenly reared up on its hind legs, throwing Galgano to the ground. But then suddenly Galgano felt an invisible force which lifted him to his feet and he heard an angelic voice which led him to Montesiepi, a big hill next to his hometown. When he reached the foot of the hill, he heard the seraphic voice tell him to be still and look at the top of Montesiepi. It was here that he saw a vision of a round table that had the twelve apostles surrounding Jesus and Mary. The voice then told him to climb the hill, and then the vision faded. But as he reached the top of the hill, he heard the voice speak again, but this time it commanded him to renounce all of his worldly desires. Saint Galgano quickly decided to object since such a thing was easier said than done. He then claimed that to accomplish such a feat was as easy as splitting a rock with a sword, in which many of you know cannot be done. But in order to prove his point, Saint Galgano drew his sword and attempted to thrust it into the rocky ground. But to his complete shock and surprise, the sword entered the rock as if he was putting a hot knife into butter. Having understood that this was a divine message, Galgano permanently lived on Montesiepi as a humble hermit and led a life of poverty. 
He was occasionally visited by peasants who wanted his blessing, and he made friends with the wild animals he lived with. And according to one legend, the devil once sent an assassin disguised as a monk to kill Galgano. However, the saint survived because the wild wolves he lived with attacked and ate the would-be assassin. But here is the interesting thing. While all of this stuff sounds like mere legend, the sword that Galgano thrust into the stone really does exist. Galgano Guidotti met his demise in 1181 at the young age of 33. His funeral was a major event during the time, and the following year the Bishop of Volterra placed Montesepi under the care of a Cistercian monk who obviously knew that they would erect a shrine in Galgano's memory. Construction of a large round chapel began in 1185, and this became known as the Cappella di Montesieppi and is located just above the main abbey. And you might not believe this, but the legendary sword of St. Galgano is still there to this day. For many centuries, the sword in the stone at Montesieppi was believed to be fake, except by those most devout. But this is the 21st century where finding fake things is easier than ever before thanks to advanced technology. Research found that based on the metal composition and style, the sword is indeed from the 12th century. It has a basic design with a flat pommel that is slightly egg-shaped with a truncated form. The guard on the sword is a straight bar of steel, and its style is associated with known weapons of the 12th century. In 2001, a metal analysis was done by Luigi Garlaschelli of the University of Pavia in which he revealed that the sword is indeed very old. A ground-penetrating radar analysis was done that revealed a 2 by 1 meter cavity beneath the sword, which researchers believe is a burial recess that could possibly contain the remains of St. Galgano's body. And here is something really bizarre. Two mummified human arms that were found in the chapel at Montesieppi were carbon dated and found to also be from the 12th century. Incidentally, this supports the legend that if anyone attempted to remove the sword from the stone, their arms would be ripped from their body. All of this is why many argue that the sword in the stone legend didn't originate from Britain, but came from Italy. And the story of St. Galgano and his sword in a rock in Tuscany bears many similar details to the Arthurian legend of Sir Percival, who found the Holy Grail. Also, keep in mind that the first story that mentions King Arthur pulling a sword from an anvil on top of a stone appeared in a poem written by a 13th century French poet by the name of Robert de Beron. And of course, they were written several decades after St. Galgano's canonization by the Roman Church. It could be that word of Galgano's life had traveled across Europe. It is very likely that the legend of King Arthur and his sword was heavily inspired by the story of Galgano, the reformed Italian knight. The interesting thing about these two stories is that, although they do share many similar elements, each one of them conveys a different message and each fulfills a different purpose. The Arthurian legend of the sword and the stone is a story that displays the might and glory and mythical qualities of King Arthur. Even though some stories tell of how King Arthur was a villain near the end of his life and was afraid of the prophecy of Mordred, his son, who was foretold to bring his untimely demise. This brought the king to an extreme paranoia, and he imprisoned children which he put on a ship and sent out to sea. As the legend goes, the ship was wrecked and only Mordred survived, and did fatally wound Arthur as Merlin's prophecy foretold. On the other hand, the story of St. Galgano's sword speaks of faith, humility, and the path to righteousness. By doing the opposite of what he was told and, in trying to prove something impossible, he thrust the blade into the rock-solid ground. And while it's likely that St. Galgano Guidotti's story may just be an exaggerated story, much like King Arthur and Excalibur, the legacy is far from forgotten. For one, much of Galgano's story seems to be real. The round temple in Montesepi is still standing today and is still holding the legendary sword believed to be Galgano's as well as those mummified arms of the man who apparently tried to take the sword. And yes, the walls of the Abbey of San Galgano on Montsiepi are also still standing. And if you want to get a look at what could very well be the real Excalibur, the place has become a tourist attraction due to its haunting beauty, history, and architecture. We hope you enjoyed this video. Would you travel to see the sword at Montsiepi? Tell us what you think in the comments. And if you like this video, then click the subscribe button and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video arrives. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.